If you uh, turn your Bible to John chapter 11, we are going to be diving in to this um, pretty much verse by verse, um, and it's really just going to be a study of John 11, and there's a clear point, um, a clear message in here that Christ is, and or Christ, what Christ did, and he taught his disciples and even um, the Jews and Mary and Martha, but we're also going to be looking at a couple other things. Now, I have nine points today, but don't worry, they're going to go quicker than my dad's prayers, okay? They'll be pretty fast. So, um, they'll be, they're not as bad as you think, okay? So, uh, anyway, starting um, in verse 1, um, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, whom thou lovest is sick. So this passage of scripture starts out right away. And it starts out with, they sought him out. Okay, that's the first point. They sought him out. So they had a need, they had a burden, obviously, Lazarus was really sick, and he was dying, and they're like, man, we have to go find Christ because we need him to heal our brother. We love our brother. We don't want him to die, as we know he did, but um, we, we got to go find the Savior. So they sought him out. Secondly, we see the sick brother in verses 4 through 6. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. So they sought him out. They gave him the message. And instead of jumping to his feet and just traveling um, to go answer their prayer, hear their brother, done. No, it says he waited two days. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have a burden, I want it done now. Like, like, hey, Lord, you know, what are you doing? Why are you making me wait? But nonetheless, it was all for a plan, which we'll see later on. And so then we see the silly disciples in verses 7 through 17. The Bible says, then after that saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may wake him out of sleep. Then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit, Jesus spake of his disciples, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Lazarus, or excuse me, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I have not, I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, Unto his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave four days already. So we see here that he's like, okay, disciples, we need to go back into Judea again because it's time to go answer Mary and Martha's prayer. Okay, we're going to go back and we're going to take care of this situation. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You were about to be stoned by Jews who hated you, and you're going to go back? Shouldn't we, like, not do that? And then Jesus teaches him, uh, because that's what he did best. He taught people. And he taught them about, look, you silly heads, there's a need. I am, he basically, he taught them that he's the light of the world. And then they're also kind of dinguses by Oh, he's, he's sleeping, okay? He, isn't he okay if he's sleeping? No, he's dead, okay? That's what I meant. I was trying to be nice about it. But anyway, and so then the disciples being all faithful, they were like, okay, well, we're going to go with you because if you're going to die, 
we're going to die with you. So then they went. And then we see the Son of God um, picking up in verse 18. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever shall whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which would come into the world. So Martha hears that Jesus is in town. She runs up to him and is like, Look, Lord, if you, wouldn't have, if you would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And now, the Bible isn't clear of her emotion like it was in, with Mary's, as we'll see here in a minute. But she comes up to him and she's like, Lord, look, if you would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have been dead and he would have still been, a, been alive and well. And yet, she's probably, like I said, the text doesn't say this, but he waited two days before he came. So she's probably thinking, what took you so long? Why didn't you come as soon as you heard? Yada, yada, yada. And then he, he takes another moment to teach her. He's like, look, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay? And then he asked her, don't you believe this? And she goes, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Son of God. Picking up in verse 28, we see the sobbing Savior. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister secretly, saying, The Master has come and called for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth in, unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus saw, therefore, her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They sent her, sent unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should have not died? And so here we see the interaction with Mary, and this shows Mary's emotion. She came and met Jesus, and she was just weeping, like, Lord. Lazarus is dead. Like, if you would have been here, maybe that wouldn't have happened. And, and I know it wouldn't have happened because clearly she believes that he is God. And we see that Jesus was also caught up with emotion because, as we saw earlier, it said Jesus loved them. He loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And so there was a, clearly a love for them. And he, it's as he felt the burden as his own. Because of how much, because of his love for them. And then we pick it up in the next uh, few verses, 38 through 40. We see the stone and the stinky body. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha. The sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by, his, by this time he stinketh. For he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wilt, wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God? So Jesus comes up to the grave. Naturally, we know that no stone can hold him or hold anything in his way. And then we see Martha at it again, like, okay, look, he's been in there four days. He's dead, like dead, dead. Because we all know after you know, a certain amount of time of days, someone's pronounced dead, dead, okay? And so he's like, look, he's going to smell so bad. Like a Bible college student that hasn't showered in a week. I mean, so bad. Like, whoo, he stinketh. But 
Nonetheless, he was like, Martha, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God once again? Trying to teach Martha of his power and of who he was. Now, picking up in verses 41 and 42, we see the intercessor. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So here we see Christ. He's He's praying to his father. He's addressing God, his father. And he's basically asking them like, and, and praying for help that they may believe. Because the whole time, if you see, if you study this chapter, it's about, hey, believe me, okay? I am the son of God. And then we see the spectacular mir- miracle. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, and let him go. So the miracles happen. Lazarus is now raised from the dead. Um, I won't take time to read the rest of the chapter, but in verses 45 through 57, um, it's the skeptics and the seers is the ninth point. And basically, I'll read the first two verses. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. So you have the skeptics and the seers. The seers who saw what happened and believed. And the skeptics were like, oh, we're going to go off to the Pharisees and and tell them what happened. Because we don't really believe this. And they're going to love this juiciness. And so (laughs) this... Um, this passage of scripture is really just has a lot of meat in it. And you've heard, I'm sure, many, many messages come from this passage of scripture. But in verse 4, looking back, there's a clear point that Christ is trying to make from this passage. And it's, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So, Jesus waited two days. Why, why did he wait two days? So that way, the glory of God and the, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That's the whole point. He waited. He could have done it right away. We see many times it mentioned, like, man, if, like Martha said it. Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. You saw the Jews. Surely, if he would have been here, Lazarus could have not died. And then we see even Mary and her emotional self saying, Lord, if that would have been here, Lazarus, my brother, he, he, he probably wouldn't have died. He wouldn't have died. But that wasn't the point of that. The point was for that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And I wonder how many of us go through things. How many of us have a burden and a need and we're going through it? And we're like, man, this just absolutely stinks. Like, I don't like this. This is too hard for me. Uh, Whether, you know, it could be anything. It could be a lost loved one. It could be depression. It could be something like that. Anxiety. You name it. And it's like, man, why am I going through this? This is so hard. And you just, you're, you're seeking. Like, we saw that they went out to seek for Jesus. They sent somebody unto him because they had a need. And it was great. And it was like, Lord... My, my brother's sick. And we, we feel that way. We're like, Lord, help me with this. I can't go through this. I don't want to go through this. And yet, we get so caught up in what we don't want when we don't realize that it's for the glory of God. And it's for God's glory. Um, last year, or no, two years ago, I got diagnosed with tachycardia. So my heart wanted to beat so fast, it wanted to explode. Not really. Tachycardia isn't really that um, life-threatening. It was the blockage, you know, in the artery that, that was. But anyway, um, and I, I didn't understand it. You know, I'm, I'm a healthy being, you know, for the most part. I'm 
not overweight. I'm very active every day. I, I, I work for UPS, so I put in 20,000 steps a day. So you're like, man, your heart should be like the healthiest thing in the world. Yeah, I know. Until you work for UPS. Oh, anyway, um, but um, it was hard because here I am, all of a sudden, I wake up one morning, like literally, J uh, January 4th, um, went to work, normal day, got home, and then I felt something weird in my chest. I'm like, man, something just feels off. Like, like, I don't know what it is. So I went to bed. I didn't really sleep the best because, you know, when your heart's going, you know, you can't really sleep good. But I woke up, and it was blizzarding, so it helped my decision. Be like, you know what, I don't want to go to work today. I'm gonna, just going to go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor, and sure enough, an hour later, they were like, yeah, you're going to the ER. I was like, okay. So I went to the ER, and then I booked a night in the hospital, yay me, um, for my heart condition. And then four months later, I had scheduled a cardiac ablation. So that's when they go up and they try to burn that part of the heart that's all sporadic. Okay. Basically, here's how, you, here, here's how you can picture it. One part of me was normal, and the other one had ADHD. Okay, they were just like, <laughs> okay. And so that's, they were just going to try to burn off that ADHD, ADHD kid and let him go away. Um, but it was unsuccessful. And so I was like, man, what in the world? And it was four months of just really just like a trial. And two months into it, I was like, okay, Lord, I clearly can't do anything with my life right now besides sit here and mope. So I'm listening. And it was at that point where I decided and, and really just said, Lord, I'm going to go through this, and I want to know why and what you're going to be teaching me. Instead of just, man, I shouldn't be going through this. This is the worst. I'm healthy. I'm young. Why am I going through this? Yada, yada, yada. And it was at that point where actually, um, and this is kind of humbling. It's really humbling because growing up, um, a, little, a little testimony of, from my background. I grew up, you could say, in the Baptist pew. Okay, you, You've seen my parents. You know, I, Every time the church doors were open, we were there. And even when they were closed, we were still there. Okay, Like all the time in church. And so um, you could say I, I grew up good, you know, I, but that didn't come with its problems. At 17, I went through a stage of depression, heavy depression, to the point where I doubted myself, my salvation, God himself, and I almost committed suicide. And as I look back at that time, God has been so good to me. But that was the beginning of a journey that I would, the next year I would come here to Masters Baptist College um, for what I thought was I was supposed to be um, in full-time ministry. And through this time of my tachycardia, I look back at my life um, growing up and everything else and just at the situations and it was a self-calling I would say into full-time ministry and so that's why I'm still here guys I haven't left stuck in North Dakota hey, hey. Uh, and then today's like today don't help anyway um, but it was very humbling because I've spent a good bit of my life pursuing something that I thought God wanted. But really, I love to serve. I mean, I love to serve in a church. I'm the teen leader here. I love the teenagers, even though they're crazy. I love them to death. But it was through that, that trial, it was through that time that God showed me. And instead of saying and blaming God for my situation, I embraced it and said, God, show me how I can glorify you and how you can be glorified through my circumstance. And 
That's what we see here in John chapter 11. That the whole point of this, the whole point of even just him waiting two days, was so that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. We even see that in verse 15 when he's telling the disciples, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, and then he said, nevertheless, let us go. And so, if you're going through something, and even if you're not, if you're down the road, you know, at 25 years old, and you have some kind of health issue, and whatever the case may be, you know, don't, don't be so caught up in the circumstance, but recognize, hey, God's doing something in your life so that one day you can stand up here and you can testify of it. You know, I look back at my life and it's not, it wasn't great, it wasn't perfect, but I'm very blessed. And I know and recognize the grace that God has had on my life and I can't thank him enough for it. And that's why I'm a little weird, but you know what? <laughs> Praise the Lord anyway. So, um, with, that, with that, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity to testify of your greatness, Lord, so that the glory of, of you, the glory of God, might be shed upon anybody who is listening. And Lord, thank you so much for, for listening to us, Lord, and for allowing us to be able to be used of you, Lord, so that we can magnify the glory of God through us to other people, Lord, to other Christians, to lost people, to who, whomever is around us, Lord. And I pray that we won't get so caught up in this situation that we will recognize what's going on and that we may honor and glorify you in our vessels. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.